decided to work on Telemann's Cantata Eno, which is not performed very often, so it's not, it's not familiar. So we've thrown something at them that they, they don't know. It was very interesting because we went through the the score and the text, most importantly, to get a real picture of what it is that's going on that we're expressing musically. I always thought like that we had to prepare with knowing the text, finding the translation so you understand what the text, but especially because we, it was in purpose, we, we came not knowing what we were gonna work on. So it made me realize how important it is to have this knowledge and understanding and this preparation before coming to a rehearsal. It's good because it's got a lot of accompanied recit, which is, I think, in some ways, some of the hardest stuff to, um, to work together with singers and instrumentalists. So as a cellist, you play uh, restative, and that's something that um, I don't have much experience with. It's all about the, the text and the, the, the language. So in Italian, in this case, understanding how that's spoken, where are the breaths, where is the line going. I think as a singer we need instrumentalists to breathe with us. We're limited by our lung capacity, we can only do so much, but also even if we're using our breath as an expressive device, that they breathe with us and then we'll automatically be together. It was challenging to switch into, okay, I'm reading the notes, so actually no, I have to really follow the text, the breathing of the singer and really go with her. It was really a privilege to have the opportunity to get to know the text on a deeper level, taking the time to really know what is being said and when it's being said. We've been looking at how Corelli specifically, but more generally, Baroque music was constructed and how ornamentation and improvisation kind of was such a factor in how these composers wrote their music. I think it really helped me to kind of uh, structure my mind about them because when you are facing a part with all these notes, it's kind of a bit scary sometimes because you know you have to do something. We've lost maybe sometimes the ability to kind of think for ourselves and make our own stuff up. So what we've been working on today is trying to instill a bit more of that kind of fantasy back into playing this kind of music. So I think the challenge was like just to on the spot be able to play a piece that I don't know, adding all these very nice ornaments. For me the most difficult point is when you know you have to stay in time because everyone is actually waiting for you but you also need to improvise and be free and this kind of like link between freedom and actually rhythmical structure is actually very hard to do. I think it's very important to have a solid understanding of the harmony and the kind of rhythmic structure underneath that. Ornamentation is a really good guide for the music to go in a direction. So it's not just add stuff here and there, but it can be very functional. And it's an art that's kind of been lost a little bit since the advent of, you know, composers writing much more kind of instructions in the music down. And I think that's one of the big things with music is that we're looking on one hand at the big picture and also breaking it down into very, very fine detail. <laughs>